This episode of Marijuana Today Daily is brought to you by CardMax Payments, the trusted merchant processing broker that helps hard-to-place merchant industries find trustworthy, reliable payment processing services. If you have a legal marijuana adult use or medical dispensary, head shop, vape shop, or online CBD or hemp products store and aren't taking non-cash payments from your customers, then you need to swing over to CardMaxPayments.com to see how they can help you do business better. They have a wide network of payment processing partners who they turn to to help their customer merchants accept non-cash payments. Shrug off the burdens of doing all of your business in cash by opening up cardmaxpayments.com for a free and quick quote on what it would look like to work with the pros over at CardMax Payments. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Monday, May 14th, 2018, and you're tuned in to episode 488 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. Our top story kicking this week off is a piece over at Marijuana Moments by Kyle Yeager, who nicely covered Friday's introduction of a number of hemp-related amendments to the U.S. Farm Bill, a comprehensive piece of must-pass legislation currently in the works in the U.S. House of Representatives. Three amendments changing federal hemp laws were put forth, two legalizing hemp outright, while a third would lift restrictions on business banking imposed on the hemp industry. Pop over to Marijuana Moment for all the details on the amendment, which will go up later this week before the House Rules Committee, chaired by noted marijuana prohibitionist Congressman Pete Sessions of Texas, who has no family relation with U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions, even if they do belong to the same family of regressive marijuana policy thinkers. There's reason for hope, though, as one of the hemp legalization amendments is similar in approach to a bill recently introduced into the U.S. Senate by Republican Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. So we might see some inter-party pressure on Congressman Sessions to allow the hemp amendments to be properly considered. And as Kyle is also reporting, there's a possible path forward for the language that circumvents the House via later conference committee. This is a good one to read in full. The Mormon Church has officially come out against a proposed ballot measure in Utah that would allow for a limited medical marijuana program. More than 60% of Utah citizens are Mormons, so the LDS Church enjoys an outsized influence on state politics. On Friday, the church released a legal analysis of the medical marijuana amendment, which has been caught up in the news in recent days over controversy around prohibitionist efforts to convince people who had signed on in support of the measure to rescind their signatures before tomorrow's deadline. As you might imagine, the church's legal analysis was not very progressive in its perspective, saying that allowing sick people better access to the medicine that makes them feel better would make it harder for police to know which cannabis was medical and which was adult use. It also criticized the ballot measure for allowing Utah patients to grow their own medicine at home and, of course, asked, what about the children? The analysis is basically a bullet-pointed list of prohibitionist talking points that was likely put together by a group like Kevin Sabet's Project SAM. You can click over to Utah Policy for more on this one, as well as to check out the Church's Fearful Report. Wrapping up today's top headlines, we have Oregon Congressman Earl Blumenauer making a pretty bold prediction over this past weekend by saying that he thought federal prohibitions on marijuana would fall sometime within the next four years, but possibly as short as two. On Saturday, Congressman Blumenauer addressed a cannabis industry event in Portland, Oregon, and said, quote, I made a bet that within five years, every state will be able to treat cannabis like alcohol and that there will be universal access to medical marijuana. If we do our job, it's game over in two years, unquote. Blumenauer was referring to this November's elections when an anticipated blue wave of pissed off American voters are expected to topple Republican lawmakers from office in a tidal wave of discontent over how bad of a job the GOP is doing at running the country. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. 
Before we blitz out on headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, CardMax Payments, the trusted merchant processing broker that helps hard-to-place merchant industries find trustworthy, reliable payment processing services. CardMax Payments specializes in helping industries like legal marijuana do more business without the burdens of cash. Doing more of your customers' transactions digitally means that you enjoy greater financial transparency while also cutting down on the number of times you have to drive to the bank. What's not to love about that? If you're legal adult use or medical marijuana dispensary, head shop, vape shop, or online CBD or hemp products store could use some help in doing more of your business without cash, then pop over to cardmaxpayments.com for a free and quick quote on how they can help you do business better. That's cardmaxpayments.com, which is spelled exactly like it sounds. Cardmaxpayments.com. All right, time for the blitz. The California Bureau of Cannabis Control is reporting back on some of the results from cease and desist letters it issued back in February to marijuana businesses that had not yet secured any kind of state licensing and that hadn't yet begun the process of doing so. Around 700 letters were sent out by the state, and Lori Ajax, the bureau's director, said late last week that a little less than a quarter of all companies contacted had either closed down, shut down online ads they had been running, or started the process of applying for legal licensing. Zipping up to Canada for a headline, we have news that Liquor Store NA, a large liquor store chain with hundreds of shops in Canada and the U.S., is changing its name to Alcana to better reflect their new dual focus on selling alcohol and legal cannabis. The company will keep its two namesake divisions separate, but said that legal marijuana is now just as much a part of its business as alcohol. Wired has an interesting story about a conflict between federal and state law playing out in California. As the state works to implement adult use marijuana legalizing Proposition 64, it's carved out space in its laws allowing for companies transporting legal cannabis around the state from shop to shop and from processing and manufacturing facilities. The snaggle tooth in this story comes from requirements that certain classes of transporters report their activities to the federal government. A good one to read no matter which market you're in, as this one is likely to pop up in other areas, this side of a change in federal law. Swinging up north for a story, CTV News has a good piece up looking at the mountains of marijuana waste product being thrown away by licensed medical marijuana cultivators in Vancouver, where federal Canadian law mandates that farmers throw out all of their non-flower buds from their cannabis plants. Cultivators have to properly track the disposal of their plant trim and stock, which they say is wasteful as there are revenue streams that could be generated from other parts of the marijuana plant, including fibers, juiced cannabis, and concentrates and extracts. This is another universal problem that will be seen in some form in every place that overly regulates marijuana. Speaking of diversified revenue streams from cannabis, the AP picked up on the growing number of marijuana cultivators who are starting to add hemp to their farming portfolio. Hungry for the higher prices and somewhat lower legal barriers open to the hemp industry. That trend is especially prevalent in Oregon, where falling prices for medical and adult use cannabis is pushing farmers to convert more of their growing space to hemp strains with low THC and high CBD counts. Marijuana Moment grabbed the last two spots today with Kyle Yeager starting off the two-piece ender with a story about a raft of comprehensive legislation introduced late last week into the U.S. House of Representatives by members of the Congressional Black Caucus that would, among other things, strip cannabis from the list of federally controlled substances. The bill, titled the Jobs and Justice Act, weighed in at around 1,300 pages and has a broader goal of boosting job growth and improving racial justice. Besides removing cannabis from being considered a controlled substance, it would also remove all mandatory minimum sentences for drug offenses. There's little chance of the legislation passing given the current conservative makeup of the government, but it's notable that marijuana is featured as prominently as it is in the bill. Finally, for today, Marijuana Moments' Tom Angel, an infrequent regular on our podcast, Marijuana Today, covered a quiet change made by Republican leaders in the U.S. Senate to allow judicial nominees who have consumed cannabis after passing the bar exam to stand for a nomination to the federal bench. For years, the rule for judicial nominees was that any who had admitted to the FBI of smoking cannabis two times or more in the time after they passed the bar exam was disqualified for consideration. 
As Tom's story notes, this piece of seemingly good news has a political tint, as some Democrats are pointing out that Republican lawmakers had no problem banning anyone who had smoked pot from nomination when it was a Democratic president sending over nominees. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again tomorrow morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily and visit our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. Thanks to our sponsor, Card Max Payments, and to all of our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the lesser ranks of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Shay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in and starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.